Okay, in this lesson we're talking about uh, chapter 18, section 4, solubility equilibrium. Back earlier in the semester when we talked about ionic compounds, we said some of them were insoluble. But really, we were oversimplifying because all ionic compounds dissolve at least a little tiny bit in water. And we're going to use the concept of solubility equilibrium to quantify just how much dissolves and, uh, and use that for uh, determining concentrations of how much dissolves. Okay, let's take something that uh, is not very soluble in water, an ionic compound. Lead 2 chloride is an example of something that we would have called earlier in the semester insoluble. Well, we can write an equation for it dissolving in water uh, that looks like a chemical equation. So lead 2 chloride would be PbCl2. It's a solid. And when it dissolves in water, it forms the lead 2 ion and 2 chloride ions. Now, it's not a chemical equation. It's actually a physical process. But the equilibrium works just the same. Um, when we get to, there's a forward reaction of the lead 2 chloride dissolving and reverse reaction of the lead ion and chloride ion precipitating back to lead 2 chloride. And we reach an equilibrium where the rate of the dissolving is equal to the rate of the precipitation. Okay, when we're at that equilibrium, we can talk about an equilibrium constant. So if we were to write the KEQ of this, um, I'll call it a reaction, even though technically it isn't, KEQ, we would take the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the uh, reactant raised to the power of their coefficient. So we'd have the lead 2 ion concentration times the concentration of the chloride ion raised to the second power because of that 2 um, coefficient in front. Now, we would divide by the uh, reactant, products over reactant, except that we don't include in equilibrium expression solids or liquids. So the lead 2 chloride wouldn't go in this. So this would be the KEQ for the dissolving of lead 2 chloride. It's just the concentration of the products raised to their uh, power of their coefficients. Now, in this specific case where we have an ionic solid dissolving in water, we give the KEQ a different name. It's called the solubility product constant, or KSP, but it's determined just like any other KEQ. So KSP here is the concentration of the lead 2 ion times the concentration of the chloride ion raised to the second power. Now the smaller the KSP is, the less soluble the compound is. Now you can memorize that or you can figure it out. I, I don't memorize too well, so I just figure it out. If, if this solid is not very soluble, it means you don't have a lot of ions here. So if this is little, it makes KSP small, okay? If these two numbers multiplied together is big, then that means that KSP is big. It means that this must have dissolved quite a bit. So since the smaller the KSP, the less soluble the compound is, um, we can go to a table. This is a copy of a table from your book that gives the KSP values at 25 degrees C for all different compounds. Now notice they're all to the negative power. This didn't copy real well, um, but each one of these is a negative power because you're really only interested in KSP for things that are not very soluble. Now notice that these are solubility at 25 degrees C. Solubility is temperature dependent, so if the temperature were to change, the KSP would change. It's given at 25 degrees C because that's the typical temperature of a laboratory. So uh, we're being asked a question here, which is less soluble, silver chloride 
or silver iodide. Well, if you go to our KSP chart, and no, you won't have to memorize uh, KSPs. We'll always give those to you. Uh, let's look for silver chloride. There's silver chloride and its KSP. And silver iodide and its KSP are here. Silver chlorides is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. And silver iodide's KSP is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17. Well, remember when you're dealing with negative exponents, the um, bigger the negative exponent, the smaller the number is. So silver iodide has the smaller KSP than silver chloride. So which is less soluble? It would be the silver iodide. Okay, it has a smaller KSP. Now we can also use KSP to uh, solve some problems. Uh, usually we're going to be asked, what's the concentration of a particular ion um, in solution? And we'll always be given the KSP. So for our first example, what's the concentration of lead ions in a saturated solution of lead sulfide if the KSP for lead sulfide is 3 times 10 to the minus 28. Now I always uh, write an equation first. Okay, I think it's important to follow these steps. Lead sulfide is a solid. When it's dissolving in water, it's going to make the lead 2 ion, which is aqueous, and the sulfide ion, which will also be aqueous when it's dissolved. Then we can write our KSP expression, product silver reactant, so it's a concentration of the lead ion to the first power times the concentration of the sulfide ion. It's also to uh, the first power since there's no coefficient in front of each one of these. And they're giving us the value of KSP. So we can set that equal to 3.0 times 10 to the minus 28. Now, they want us to find the concentration of the lead ions from that. So let's let X, we're going to do a little algebra here, letting X equal the concentration of the lead 2 ion. So in this equation, we're going to replace lead 2 ion with X. Now, the concentration of the sulfide ion is the same because these are in a 1 to 1 ratio in the compound. When they dissolve, they're in a 1 to 1 ratio. So for every lead ion, you have to have a sulfide ion. So since they're the same, we're going to replace the concentration of sulfide ion with X here as well. They equal to 3.0 times 10 to the minus 28. Or x squared equals 3.0 times 10 to the minus 28. Well, how do you find x? You just take the square root of x squared to find x. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So the square root of x squared is x. And then we have to get our calculator out and find the square root of 3 times 10 to the minus 28, and it is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, that's, remember what X was. It's the concentration of the lead ion. And concentrations are measured in molarity usually, so we give that molarity. So we have found the question they were asking us for, the concentration of the lead ions in a solution of lead sulfide. Okay, let's do another example. What is the copper 2 ion concentration and the iodate ion concentration when uh, copper 2 iodate dissolves, and they're giving us the KSP. Well, again, I always write the equation first, CuIO3 
2 makes the copper 2 ion aqueous, and this was solid. Um, and iodate, let's see, there's going to be two of these iodate ions. And they have a 1 minus charge. Okay, so then when we write KSP, the concentration of the copper ions, copper 2 ions, raised to the first power because the coefficient's 1 here, times the concentration of the iodate ion, raised to the second power because of the 2 coefficient. Now, this time, let's let x equal the concentration of the copper 2 ion. Okay, and the KSP is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7, what they told us in the problem. So, if we call this concentration x, well, now we need to know what the concentration of the iodate ion is. Well, if we look at our formula up above, for every one copper in this compound, there's two iodates. For every one copper, two iodates. So if the concentration, when this dissolves, it dissolves in the, in the ratio of for every one copper two ion, there are two iodate ions. So um, what we would replace the iodate concentration with is 2x because for every one of these that dissolves you're going to have two of these <clears throat> and since it was squared we have to keep our keep our exponent there so if we do a little algebra here 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7 equals let's see this is going to be 4 x squared here times x is x cubed. To solve for x, uh, let's first dissolve, divide each side of the equation by 4. So we're going to have 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7 over 4 is equal to x cubed. Well, to find x, we need to take the cubed root. So we have to take the cubed root of the other side. And uh, if you've forgotten how to do uh, cubed roots, uh, it's the same as taking this to the one-third power. So if you take in your calculator 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 4 and take that to the one-third power, you'll have the cubed root, and you get that x is equal to 3.46 times 10 to the minus 3. And since we're talking about a concentration, it would be molar. So that is the concentration of the copper 2 ion. Copper 2 ion is equal to 3.46 times 10 to the minus 3. Well, the iodate ion concentration is two times that much. So all we have to do is say the concentration then of the iodate ion, take this number times 2, and we get 6.93 times 10 to the minus 3. And since these are both concentrations, they would be measured in molarity. Your answers here. Now you can see if you get uh, compounds, uh, think of something like aluminum iodate, where this would be um, a uh, three subscript here, you'd end up writing, finding a fourth root. So they can get kind of complicated. We typically aren't going to be doing problems uh, this complicated. We're going to be focused more on these simpler ones that dissolve in a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, but... Um, when you get into AP chemistry, you'll see more of this kind of problem. Okay, now the last part of this section, the common ion effect. Well, first of all, a common ion is an ion that's found in both compounds and solution. 
So if you had uh, silver chloride in solution and uh, hydrogen chloride in solution, or hydrochloric acid is what that is, they both contain the chloride ion. Now, the lowering of the solubility of an ionic compound by adding a common ion is called the common ion effect. Now, HCl, hydrochloric acid, is completely soluble in water. And the question here is what effect would be, what would be the effect, I guess I've got my English wrong here, what effect would be, I should say, uh, what would be, let's move that out, what would be the effect of adding uh, hydrochloric acid to a saturated solution of silver chloride? Now, silver chloride is not very soluble. Its KSP is given in the chart. We're not going to need it for this question, but um, it's not very soluble. I always write, <clears throat> it's a solid. I always write my equation first so I can tell what's going on. So this is the one that's slightly soluble. And the question is, <clears throat> since HCl is almost completely soluble, it's going to make hydrogen ions and chloride ions, lots of them. So when you add HCl to this in solution, you're adding more chloride ions. So what does um, Le Chatelier's principle tell us? If we add more of this ion, Whatever we do to a reaction, the way I always like to think of Le Chatelier's principle is whatever we do to a reaction, it's going to try to undo it. So if we add more of these when this reaction is equilibrium, it's going to try to make them go away by shifting this equilibrium to the left. Well, what happens when you have a solubility equation? If you're shifting this to the left, it means you have more of the solid and less of <clears throat> the ions in solution. So that makes the silver chloride less soluble. So the effect of adding this common ion is to make AgL, silver chloride, less soluble. Okay, and these, not so much this problem, but these two kinds of questions are uh, what you're going to be asked in your uh, little assessment. Um, first of all, you need to be able to write the KSP expression for a dissolving compound, just like we've done here. And then um, if they ask you to find the concentration of ions, uh, you'll do it just like this. And then with the common ion effect, if you're adding a common ion, it shifts. <clears throat> now, we could have gotten this same shift if we'd added something like silver nitrate, it's very soluble. It would have made silver ions. That would have had the same effect of shifting this equilibrium to the left, making the silver chloride less soluble. Now, what if you add an ion that's not, let's say we added sodium ions. They're not in the, the reaction here. So they would have no effect. If you add an ion that's not common, it's not one of this one or this one, it will have no effect on this uh, solubility.